Hello out there to you. In this video, we're going to do a small, what's called a small country trade model. So this is a country that uh, basically is a price taker with the rest of the world. They're not big enough to um, set prices. They just interact uh, that way. So some vocabulary you're going to see if you don't already know this. The word autarky means uh, without trade. It's kind of it's just like a baseline to think about how countries might be without trade, uh, without interacting with the rest of the world. The closest thing as of 2023 we're talking about would be something like um, North Korea, but even North Korea trades a little bit with China. So um, it's just sort of a, a baseline that we're using uh, when comparing it to the rest of the world. So. I've got GeAlgebra here. We're going to graph it. Um, you can solve for uh, Q and P there, um, but since we're going to draw the graph anyway, uh, let's just uh, let's just do that now. Um, when you're doing economics graphs, Q is going to need to equal X, and P is going to need to equal Y, and then you can just plug these into your graphing calculator. It makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to plug it in like this: Q equals 100 minus y that's the same thing as that demand function and then i'm going to zoom out a little bit on my graphing calculator this is this is what's called domestic demand so now that we have domestic demand let's do uh domestic supply so this is what it gets produced in that country uh so it's x equals negative 10 plus 10 y and this gives us the domestic supply. And then you just click where they're at uh, and X, which is quantity. So the quantity is 90 and the price is 10. So I'm going to write that right here. Um, the domestic price would be 10 under autarky. And the quantity that they're going to purchase, the consumers are going to purchase, is 90. Okay, and it says compute the total consumer and producer surplus. These are going to be linear triangles. So that's pretty, pretty simple. Um, it's going to be just one half base times height. Okay, so coming over here, um, we're just going to go to the, for the consumer surplus, it's the difference between the demand and the price that they're going to pay. So they're going to pay a price of 10. They're willing to pay 100. So for consumer surplus, uh, consumer surplus, it's going to be one half from 100 down to 10, so that's 90, times the number of units they purchase, which is also 90. So 90 times 90 uh, was just 9 times 9, and then, uh, and then one half of that is 4,050. So consumer surplus, 4. 1050. And if you're doing a homework problem like this, make sure you write out all your steps uh, so you can show the person who's grading it what you were thinking. Okay, now for the producer surplus, you got to start where uh, the supply curve starts. So it actually starts on one and it goes over there. So it's it's nine. So the this part of the triangle is nine. So that's for the producer surplus. It is one half. 9 times 90 units, because they're going to sell 90 units domestically. Uh, and so that's 8, 10. It's the same number, but we're going to chop a, a 0 off, basically. So uh, 9 times 90 times 0.5, and that's 405. So the producer surplus is 405. It's a little hard to see there. That's 4,050. Okay, let the free or let the world price with free trade be P, PW for price of the world equals five, and then draw a graph. Okay, so we're just gonna I'm just gonna put that on my on my graph. If you were doing this for for homework, you could you could then take a screenshot of this. Um, what's cool about GeAlgebra is you can actually label things. So instead of calling that uh, EQ one, we could call which is equation one. We could call this domestic demand if you wanted to, and it will change that. Did it change it? Let me get a little closer here. No, it didn't. Trust me, you can. We could just call it demand. 
there you go, change it to demand. And then if I want to change this, I'm going to call this domestic supply. Well, it doesn't, it must not like a space bar. So we'll just call it supply domestic. Did it like that? No, didn't like that. Well, I'm going to get it to work. Just call it supply. There, that's domestic supply, autarky supply, whatever you want to call it. See, it's labeling it on the graph there for you. So that's kind of nice. Um, all right, next we, we need uh, the price. The world price is five. So we're just going to put in y equals five. Okay, and it draws this orange line. If you don't like orange, you can hit settings. You can change the color. You can change it to whatever color we want in GeoGebra. It's pretty slick and provided at no cost. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in a little bit. By the way, if, so for the draw the graph, you could just take a screenshot of this, or you could just draw this by hand, right? Make sure your supply starts here, your demand starts here, and then this would be P, W, we could call this uh, world price. There you go. All right. So now that's world price. Okay. So now the consumers are going to buy 95 units. Okay. So I'm going to write that over here. It says domestic consumption. So that's going to be 95 units. What you could do is actually just put in, if you wanted to do this without the graph, you could put in five right here and then solve for QD, okay? And then uh, production, so domestic production is what they mean. Uh, that's gonna be 40 units domestically, okay? So the, the domestic producers will still produce some. Uh, and so that's gonna be 40. Again, you could do the same thing with your, um, your supply, your supply function here, you could plug in a five there and then solve for that. That would also give you 40. And then the imports, the imports is the difference between the two. So the domestic suppliers are going to make 40. The domestic demanders are going to buy 55 or sorry, uh, 95. So the difference is 55. So that's the, the number of imports. You can also see that on the graph. So if you come over here and look at what, this is what they're going to buy. They're going to buy 95. This is what's going to be sold. It's going to be sold 40 difference there, 55. Okay, compute consumer gain, producer loss, and the net welfare gain to free trade. So what I would do is I'm just going to recalculate consumer surplus. So it's going to go, now it's going to be a bigger triangle. So we're going to go from here all the way down to here and then over to here. So it'll be uh, a bigger consumer surplus. So let's come on down here. Consumer surplus, one half. Uh, now it's 95 times the number of units, they're buying 95 units. So consumers are 95 times 95 times 0.5. So 4,500, 4,512, 50. That is, so then we're gonna take that as the difference between the original consumer surplus. The original consumer surplus was this. So it's a consumer gain of the difference, which is 462.5. That makes economic sense because the consumers are going to buy more units at a lower price, so they're going to, their consumer surplus can be bigger. The producer loss, so we're just going to calculate the producer surplus um, as the difference here. So now it's just this triangle here, and it's the difference between those two triangles. So we're going from one, one up to five. So the new producer surplus is, um, is four, because that's the difference between one to five. And then we come over here to uh, 40 units. This one I can actually do in my head. That's 160, so that's 80. So the difference is difference between 405 minus 80 so that's 325 so the producer loss is negative 325 or you could just say they lost 325 in surplus okay the net welfare gain is the difference between these two so uh, so it's a positive number so it's uh the difference between those two is just how much better this country is it's 137 0.5. That's the, the gain from trade, as we would say. Okay. 
So we're through there. And all right, now the last one, we're going to put a tariff on it. It says the domestic government enacts a tariff of, of $3 and the world price is $5. So that means that it, the new price is going to be 80 or sorry, eight rather, sorry. Um, so if you want to leave that there, you certainly can. Um, I'm going to just go eight and then uh, I'll call this, uh, we'll call this P tariff. Okay. So P tariff is the new new price. And I got too many blue lines, so let's pick a different color. It's fine. Maybe like a purple or something. That's good. Okay. Uh, all right. So now the consumers are going to buy 92 units. Price is going to be eight. And then the, the domestic sellers are going to sell 70 units. And the price is going to be eight. So the difference between the two is right there. That's the number that will be imported. So now there will be 22. Um, units imported. So QD now, uh, domestically, 92. QS, domestically produced, 70 units. I'm just reading that right off the graph. But you could also put in 8 back up here if you wanted to. Uh, new levels of domestic consumption, got that. Production, got that. The difference between the two, the imports, that would be 22. Compute also the loss of consumer surplus, the gain of producer surplus, uh, the consumption and production distortion losses, and government revenues. Okay, so government revenue, that's easy. That's going to be the tariff, which is $3, times the number of imports. So that would be 66. Is there a net gain or loss? Well, we actually know there's going to be a loss um, because we have the, the domestic producers producing at a higher cost and we have the consumers not buying all that they want to buy uh, or that they're able to buy at that world price so we, we know there's going to be a loss so you actually have a choice you what you can do if you want to see the loss is right here this is the part of the loss from from here to here that's the dead weight loss due to the wasted production okay it's like too much produced now this triangle here, this is a gain to the producer surplus, to the domestic producers, and then this is a gain to the domestic producers too. And then over here, uh, we lose this little triangle. So this is another deadweight loss. Okay, so we know uh, there's going to be some some loss there. So if we wanted to calculate everything, uh, we certainly can do that. But this is this is the graph. So if you wanted to see that, now if you wanted to, you could even delete that part and then you just got p tariff so on a different graph and if you need to put it back just put y equals five that puts your world price right back there but so all you need to do is just recalculate um the producer surplus um which would be this point here so it'd be um seven so the new producer surplus i guess i might as well do that finish out the video um one half seven, because we're going from one to eight on 70 units. So that's 490, half of 490 is, I don't know, off the top of my head, it's 245, 245, okay? That's the new producer surplus. So the producers are gonna gain uh, the difference between where they were and where they're, where they're at. Uh, so they, they gain 245 to 80, so that's the difference there. So domestic producers end up 165 better off. Okay, um, so we'll say we'll say producers 165. Now, if we count this as government revenue, it depends on your class. Um, if your instructor says 66, or the government revenue is like called government surplus, then um, we're going to add that. We're going to say that that's an increase. If in some classes of the more free market type, they, they don't count that as a plus, that's a, a sort of a part of the deadweight loss or wasted money or something like that, um, then you would you would not count that as a positive, but either way. All right, and then what's the consumer surplus? And then we'll see the difference here. Um, so the consumers are gonna end up worse off. So they are uh, 92, so it's one half. 92 because we're going all the way from 100 down to 8 
and then we're going all the way over. Oh, it's 92 times 92. Whoever wrote this problem, they were uh, some slick math there. 92 times 92, and then one half of that is 4232. Two. So 4232. Two. This is the consumer surplus after uh, the tariff. Okay, they're still better off than under autarky. You can see that, you can compare that, but they're not as well off as they were uh, over here. So how much did the consumers lose? So the consumers lose the difference here. So I'm just gonna subtract the other number here. They lose 280.5, 280.5 on the consumer side. Okay, so we can take this number we can add the, the gain to producer surplus, which is uh, 165. Now we're still 115 back. In most classes are gonna add that government tax revenue. We're still worse off uh, by 49.5. When you're doing this kind of thing, write out all your steps in case you make a math error, but that's how to solve uh, this kind of thing, a small country uh, tariff graph question.